Hello, hello, and I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic day. So today we're taking a look at making this kind of bench like structure, where we can also have a laser cutting file in the end that we can use here. So obviously, we can increase and decrease the amount of places that there are. And obviously, the amount of those things will be increased or decreased as well within our file here. So for that, let's create a new file in bgraphy. So let's go to bgraphy and then create a new model. It's called laser cutting uh, one. Now that we have that, that's basically the way of how we want to design that, right? So we have two point lists that are connected between each other and then create a kind of rectangular shape that will sometimes go on the ground and sometimes not. And that we then will move and rotate uh, uh, along the floor. So we have actually a 3D printing file or 3D cutting file. So first of all, let's start with points. So let's make construct point command and let's create a sequence um, that will help us with that. That sequence then needs a, an, an amount of uh, a, a, like a range and then also like a step amount. So for the range input, we're going to use um, like uh, between one and let's say 20. And this will be like the amount, amount of uh, rectangles. And then we also want to have obviously the distance between those rectangles as well. So let's say distance, um, distance rectangles like that. And we're going to use this as a step. And this we then put into the X direction of our thing. And as you see now, we have some nice little points created here. Now that we have that, we also want to create points in the Y direction. And for that, we're going to use um, those same things here. I'm going to copy those two things at least. And this would then be our sinus curve, let's say sinus curve. And we're going to use that as a sign. So we use a sign function here. And we're going to use that as the Y direction. And for that, you see it kind of going like a little bit in the flow direction. And here we can obviously increase or decrease the flow of that. If we have a bit more or less. Now we want to have the same thing, but also um, with our things in the other direction, right? So how can we do that? Actually, I want to try this out a little bit if the sinus function works correctly here. Um, oh yeah, we also need to connect the amount of rectangles to the count here as well. So we have it continuously. So now we want to create another set of points. And this can say just, just copy and paste this over here. But I also want to have the count amount the same. And so we can delete this. And the step amount can be also be the same. We also only want to have the function here. And so we're going to name it like the cosine cosine curve and we're going to use also cosine as the value here and um, we get the correct amount out there but now we also need to move it a bit into the um, into upwards here so we're going to increase the y value so we don't just add something to it like this add and then we're going to add like maybe like five let's say if this work and we have this here now at our function great now that we have two um, kind of curves as you see here and they're kind of like play with each other although they may be not right so kind of like exist in between now we want to move those points upwards right so into the z direction so we're gonna move and we have like a set amount of a constant that we're gonna move it upwards um, let's say like the uh, let's put actually also as a range so we have something to work with so the um, uh, kind of sitting heights would that be and we're going to use a z vector then as well for that to move it, let it move upwards. Great. Now that we have this for the first one, we also want to have for the second one. I'm going to use the same vector and move it upwards as well. So it's going to, it's kind of co coherent. Good. Now that we have that, we have like basically two defined um, curves here, right? Now that we have that, we also want to make it some as they, they, they go lower and they don't go lower, right? So I'm we're going to use this by doing the following. So first of all, let me actually increase this amount a little bit, the, the distance between those two. Oops, like that. 
and um, actually make it lower like this. Okay. And now I want to see basically how much lower I can get with this. This basically is the lowest like number that we have here, at least for the not for the sitting height, at least here, the 5.2. And so we're going to move them down again. So we're going to use um, a vector here. And then I want to basically see, like depending on the distance of those things, it moves down more or less, right? So the, the wider it is, it moves down more. If it's a bit less, then it moves down less. So we're going to use distance, two points here. I'm going to use this one. And then connect those two points here from one to the other. And then we're going to use a z direction thing again but then we need to use, use the opposite because we want to go into the negative one right so you can use this as a negative use it as a factor and then use the curve here to move it down again let's actually remove those points that we created here so they're not gonna be in our visuals this time and as you see we have our points moving kind of like back and forth here like you see they go up and down up and down now that works great, but sometimes they go a bit like below the, the zero point, right? So I want to um, basically have only a maximum amount of points that will go there. So for this, we're we going to use a maximum or minimum. Let's see, sometimes I get confused by this a little bit and use this as our base layer as a sitting height here. And then we're going to use this as the opposite. And as you see here now, okay, now this is the other way. Let's, let's do minimum. So the minimum height should be like this and that and then we should have it's like this exactly see if it goes at the zero position then it will basically stay the same let's delete that over here now that we have that we have have it for this side and we obviously want to have it for the other side as well and use the same vector here good now that we have the vectors now we also want to create points together so they are actually kind of connected right so for this we're going to use the um a polyline polyline uh thing here and we also need to create a boolean for this as well so the boolean needs to be true in that sense and then we can here click to add ports to add points to our boolean right so we're gonna basically collect those two points now those few points now so let's start with this one right this is that one and as you see, it kind of connects like in a weird way like this, right? But we want it to basically be grafted. So we're gonna graft the tree. So you're gonna use this one, use it as a tree and then put it there. And I think this should work out in a while. Let's see. Okay, let's see, let's see. I think I think this will, I think this will be fine. So this is the second point like that. So connect it together again, right? Oh, yeah. So now we see it's, it's happening here. And then we're gonna use the third point, which should be this one, right? So we guys basically go down here and put this as a third point. And then our fourth point will be our last point here. And then it should be connecting it all nice and clear together. It might take some while. Some it's actually a good idea to just reload the canvas. So um, yeah, it's still in the beta version, right? So it might take some while. Great. So now that we have this thing created here, so we have our nice bench which basically goes like a little bit up and then kind of down again, right? Like exactly how you basically want here, like a little bit, right? So that's pretty cool, right? So they're all kind of individually framed like that. Now, what we need to do is basically we need to now um, create a um, kind of a second row of points, which we can use where we are kind of putting the rotated thing on there, right? The, the rotated the rotated rectangle so it will actually will fit on it right so for that we're going to use the rotate and then we can use this as a curve and we're going to use a um degree to radians degree to radiant and we use going to use 90 degrees because we're going to want to move it like upwards like this right so it's very rigid in that sense and the center will be one of the points that we have defined here. So we're gonna use this as a point. And then we're gonna use the vector like two uh, vector, how's it called again? Uh, vector two points, vector by two uh, by two points. We're gonna use the first and the second one here. So basically those two points that go together here and use this as our main vector to rotate it. And you see now it actually already kind of works. However, normally those things are way closer together, right? So for example, if we put this on like uh, like 
two or something, right? Those are like way closer together, right? That's that's not how we can have those later cut right away, right? So how are we gonna do this? So we are going to create a, 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 a list series again, on the list sequence here, and we create a, an amount of points. And the amount of points is actually the same amount that we have here in the rectangle. And the step has to be some kind of number that is like big enough. So let's, let's say that's 10. Now that we have that, we are going to create a list of points. So we're gonna construct point again. And we're gonna create this list of points here and also want to create them a bit like further, like further up. So let's go, let's put the const of 20 and let's move the points like here. And now I basically want to move this rectangle from here to there, right? So we're gonna use the move commands. And uh, we're also gonna use uh, the vector two point thing again, vector by two points and have this as a goal thing. And then we also need this as the, uh, this one, for example, as our main thing here. Now, at the moment, as you see, it's kind of doing it only at like from like one position. And to be honest, I don't think it might work correctly. So what we need to do here, we need to also simplify the tree. So we have a better kind of understanding of, of how this kind of stuff works. So let's put this here and this here. So it's like more clean, let's say you see it actually, it goes to the, goes to the, um, goes to the right points. So let's move the geometry from here now from there. And hopefully we should see the uh, final geometry at the correct position now. Let's actually kind of restart this very quickly or like uh, just restart the canvas. So we actually have a result in there. And yeah, it is kind of going the same correct direction, but we have the problem that it's actually um, the the way of how it is simplified. It's not completely the the, the correct way, right? So now let, let's take a look at this. So we're basically creating um, like uh, the point like here is actually might be grafted as well. That might actually help out like bits like this. So we have 14 values here. And then for this, we also need to have 14 values, right? 14, 14, 14. So let's see if this will work better like that. And this sometimes like might take a while to, to be on the correct point. Ah, and we also need to remove this because this will only be doubled. So we don't want to have this doubled, right? And let's see, let's just actually recreate this. Oh, yeah. And now we basically have our our defined kind of um, yeah, things like here. So kind of like they're moving um, along those things nice and neatly. So you just keep in mind sometimes if it doesn't work, just try to uh, repeat those steps here. So now that we have that, we also might want to um, export this, right? So for that, we're going to use um, the exporter tool here and we're gonna use the DXF. And then we basically are finished. So we basically have the, the amount here. And for example, if I want to export it now correctly, we can go like here, right? And we go into the visualizer. And obviously I, I can clean this up a little bit and make it look a bit nicer, right? Um, and let's, for example, let's just take the file that we had here and just let's download it. And let's put it into our main desktop file like this. Um, let's actually take a look here. Yeah, and then we're gonna just open Ryan, all right? and just paste it in, open file. That was the last file, so we're gonna use a new one. And you see we have the same kind of rectangles that we created there in bgraphy, and they are now from here in Rhino. Exactly. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped you out. From there, you can go on and you know you go and take it to other Rhino files or 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 make a laser cutting file out of it, right? That's basically the the concept further of it. Or you can have it directly exported to some three D uh, printing way. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, and hope this uh, little B graphy intercourse helped you out a little bit. Um, check them out what they do. You know, the li link go to the Discord. You know, link of the description is in the description of their platform. So yeah, with that's what that's it. Have a good one, and see you in the next one.